Hello, and welcome to Apex Instant Tips, episode number 130. I'm your host, Anton, and today it's just me. Um, not only is it just me, uh, it is a last minute, um, just getting in under the wire tip. Um, I had expected a co-host, but I didn't get one. But I still have a great tip. I think I can do it in just five minutes. And I have an off-topic tip, which might actually take more than five minutes. Um, so here we go. Let's see what we can do. Um, the tip today is about downloading uh, downloading files uh, through Apex. And if you Google this, well, let me let me start my timer. I'm going to share my screen, and we'll get going here. So um, let's see. First, share screen. Usually I'm on top of this, but today I'm a little behind. Um, here we go. Sharing my screen. I'm going to pull up my timer. Um, bear with me while I... Uh, all right, look at that. I think I have... Well, I turned on my timer, but I don't know where it got to. I'm going to try it one more time. All right, well, we'll just have... Oh, there it is. I found it. It's right here. Okay. So I think we're good to go. Um, though I don't see the timer here. I'm gonna just I'm gonna unshare my screen. I'm gonna try it again, see if I can do it the right way. Um, one more time. There we go. All right. Okay. So in just five minutes, I'm going to try to show a declarative way to download files. Um, so let me kick off my timer. Um, if you've ever tried to download a file and you Googled, how do you download a file from Apex, meaning download a blob, um, what you're probably going to find is it's going to tell you to create a shared component. In the shared component, you're going to go to application uh, processes. You'll create a a process that fires, let me see if I can, um, fires as an AJAX callback. Sometimes it was called an application process. Um, in any case, this is what you would normally find if you just Google the topic. Well, here, if you Google uh, Apex uh, download file application process or just download file, you would probably find this. And you'll find code very, very similar to what I show right here. Almost everybody's going to have the same kind of thing. You're going to throw out some um, some HTTP.p, some OAUtil. You're going to set your content length. You're going to set your file name. You're going to close the header. And probably you're just going to copy and paste this code. I'm going to tell you this code that you copy and paste is actually going to be missing something, which I'll try to get back to at the very end and explain what this is missing if you just copy and paste it from somewhere and don't understand what's going on. But I'm going to show a declarative way for do, to do this. Now, if you were to just within your application, um, create a page based upon a table. So if you just click create page, you do um, interactive report, you you pick a table that has, so I'm gonna call this art, and I'm gonna call, and I'm gonna do um, my art artwork table here. And if you also do a form, uh, include your form, same uh, art, if you do this, and that table, the art artwork table has a blob column in it. It's automatically going to build some things for you. I've already done this. I did the exact same thing. Um, I ended up with this right here, an interactive report. I'll go ahead and run this. Here's my interactive report. On the left is what Apex built, and on the right is what I built. So on the left, if I edit this, you can see it put this art image I, uh, file type here. If I if I click one that doesn't have it. I can upload a file, I choose a file, and let me just pick um, this file right here. Um, if I apply changes, it automatically created a download link here and a download link here. And what we're going to do is we're going to hook into this, this methodology of finding this download link. How does this get built? So the key here is Apex built this item so this art image item, this art image item is associated with a form based on art artwork. And this art image item is of type file upload. It's um, 
got the download link, which doesn't really matter, and it defines the blob column, the MIME type, and the file name. Once you have this, that's all you need to reference this anywhere at all in your application. So what you can do is here, if I return to my report, I'm going to edit my report. So this is the report I created. And you can see I also have a link right here. This link gets my file. I can get any of the files the same way. So th the question is, how do I build this link? Or how do I get this URL? That's the actual URL to the file. So the answer is a particular API right here. It's the Apex Util Get Blob File Source. What you pa pass to this is you pass it that item name, the item name on your page that dis is defined as a file upload item. And then you pass the primary key that's associated with it. So here I'm, I'm passing P3 art image ID. I can use this anywhere in my application. I don't have to be on page three. And in fact, I'm not on page three. In this case, I'm on page two. But if I use this anywhere, anywhere in the application, I can get hold of a link to this file. Um, so let me go ahead and just show that. Um, I've done this here. On, and then I've just made use of that link within my own column. So right here, I'm referencing that link as the URL. So that is the link right there. Um, and that's how I get this file name right here. And that's how I get this URL. If I want this to be a button, I can put it in a button. If I want really anywhere I want to put it, I can put this URL and get hold of that. Now, I mentioned one little thing. I'm going to get to it really quickly. If I come in here and I edit this right here, um, I'm going to find that I can say display as inline file browse, inline drop sound blocks, of native file browse. And then here, and this is the important thing, content disposition, attachment or inline. So I think I've almost made my five minutes. But if I do attachment, it's going to download the item. When I click on it, it's going to download this item. You can see right here, I get the download. But if I change that to inline, instead of downloading it, it's going to render it in the browser. It's going to have a different effect. It's going to change the header of this item. Um, I'm going to, be, going to be honest, I haven't tested this. I'm not going to, sh I'm not sure if it's even going to do it. Um, it's still downloading here. If it were a PDF though, it would, it would, um, render it in the browser in line instead of um instead of on the um instead of trying to download it and that comes back to your application process this right here content disposition inline versus attachment i mentioned earlier in your application process if you're doing it this way you can control that right here um and sorry to have gone over without somebody keeping me. Right here, you can control that as either attachment or inline. So particularly if you're doing, um, well, if you're doing uh, an image source where you want to put an image on the page, you would want it to be inline. If you want your PDF to show up in the browser, you would want it to be inline. If you want the, the file to download, you want it to be uh, attachment. So if you're doing it this way as an application process, you want to have either inline or attachment here. Um, you want to specify this, um, and normally you won't find that. Um, but if you do it declaratively, you can simply choose in in your item which way you want it to be. So you, you here declaratively can set inline or attachment. So um, I have to say, it is way harder to do this without a co-host. Um, but there you have it. So I'm going to try... Uh, well, okay, if you just came for the Apex tip, now's the time to beat it. Uh, if you actually came for, um, uh, if you came to, <laughs> because we teased an off-topic tip, uh, I'll show the off-topic tip now. But first, I see Haniel has a gun. Browser settings sometimes override this for you. Something can mind when troubleshooting. Uh, absolutely true. And um, the the that's actually not a bad segue. Um, to my next tip about understanding what browsers are doing and, and um, what's happening. Uh, so I'm going to just use that as my segue into the off-topic tip. So my off-topic tip is I've been doing a fair amount lately with, um, with 
mobile applications, PWAs, that kind of thing on mobile devices, for example, on my phone. Um, and I found very much related to what we're talking about right now, that if I was trying to, uh, trying to use, uh, to do a file download, a PDF file download in particular on my phone, in either the PWA or Safari on my phone, it just didn't work. I, I couldn't make it work um, using a particular plugin. It worked on Chrome, it worked on Firefox, it works in Brave, it works everywhere else. Um, it works on the laptop, it works on my, um, on my phone and my iPad, as long as I'm not doing a PWA or I'm using Safari. So what, what was going on with PWA or Safari? And that was the trick is how, did I, how do I look how do I look at the details of what's going on on my phone? Because you, there's no inspector. You can't right click on your phone and, and, and view the console or anything like that. Um, ah, but I did figure out exactly how to do that. So I'm going to share that right now. This is how to view the console of Safari from your phone. Uh, so I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to go to settings. That's almost visible, but settings on my phone. I'm going to scroll down to Safari. Uh, I know I know I have it here. Okay, Safari. On Safari, I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom. Wow, it's not visible at all. Oh, look at that. Maybe. I scrolled all the way to the bottom. I'm going to click Advanced. I'm going to scroll almost to the bottom with Advanced. And I've turned on something called Web Inspector. Web Inspector, that's the key. You turn on Web Inspector here. Okay, so now I've got Web Inspector turned on on my phone. I'm gonna open up Safari and I'm gonna to go to any old website. It doesn't matter, um, but I've got one here that I'm logged into. Uh, I'm going to go to oracle.com uh, on, my, on my phone. I probably should have used insum.ca, but uh, here we go. So I'm on oracle.com on my phone. You can actually almost make out that that's oracle.com. All right. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Safari. So let me pull up Safari. Um, here we go. Put that on my screen. Um, in Safari, I'm going to make sure I have web developer tools turned on. So you've got this develop right here. I'm going to say file or I'm sorry, settings and come over here to advanced and make sure you have show features for web developers checked. So you check this, show features for web developers. Next, um, I'm going to plug my phone in with a USB cable. Um, and I know I have one here, there it is. Um, so you want to plug your phone in with an actual USB cable. In case you guys don't know what they look like, this is it right here. Mine has a lightning end on it. If you have a new phone, you're rich. Um, I don't have that kind of budget for Apex Insta Tips. I still have the old lightning cable. I'm lucky I don't have like the old connector. Um, plug that into your phone. It goes right there in the bottom. If you haven't used an iPhone before, your, your connector goes right there in the bottom. Okay, so next, I'm gonna, as soon as I do that, it, if I haven't already, it's going to ask me if I want to trust my phone. Um, I say, yes, I want the phone to trust the laptop. I come in here. Now iPhone 13 shows up. That, that wasn't there before. That's my phone. That on the screen and my phone, those are the same things. Now, the first time you do it, it's going to ask you if you want to connect. It's going to do a few things. You're going to have to disconnect your phone, reconnect your phone, disconnect your phone, reconnect your phone. You might have to do it two or three times, but eventually you're going to get this. It's going to look just like this. It's going to tell you each of the tabs that you're showing on your phone. I mentioned oracle.com. That's it right here. I click here. Now I've got my full inspector. Watch this. If I go to network, and I, and I clear this out, and then I refresh on my phone. I'm gonna do a refresh, watch this. Look at that, amazing, incredible. If I go to console, I can see anything that was logged in the console. Sources, I see all the sources. I can go to my JavaScript files. I can open up a JavaScript file. I can right click. I can say create response override. I can override what the JavaScript is doing on my phone. I see all the errors. It's it's like having, well, it's not like, it is having the web inspector, but from your phone. This, I'm so excited about. Um, this is, uh, I, it, it's just changed the way I'm able to do uh, mobile app development, PWA troubleshooting, that kind of thing. Um, all right, well, 
got to say, it's um, both harder and almost certainly more boring uh, doing this alone. But I hope folks got something out of it. And you've wasted a perfectly good 15 minutes. Uh, have a great weekend. Uh, do all the things. Like the show. Send a letter to your mom. Tell Hayden you really missed him. Um, all those kinds of things. See you next week. Bye.